Tim, Young, Steve, Still Plotting, Nagar, Minari, Guillermo, Brown, Reggie, Watts. James what Corden. happened then? What happened? What happened? You've lost the power. Lost you may have lost your power. Mine is at 11, buddy. Yeah. Please continue. The bass is not important for this. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Have we lost power on the bass? Yeah, but who cares? No, hey, I care. It's summer. Let's see. Nothing. Let's see. <laughs> Maybe you need to slap it like that, though. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what that is? Yeah. I actually came down earlier today. To unplug me? Uh, well, no. It might be uh, electric. I might have got the strings too wet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 It, yeah, might be a, a short. it might be an electrical default. Yeah, a little short. A few of us here, when you're not here, we just jam down. Yeah. Kaylee's on drums. <laughs> yeah, look, you can see she's a natural drummer. Look how she drums. <laughs> I think that's... <laughs> what are we going to do about this, Rob? The new bass situation, we're going to try and plug the bass back in. OK, let's plug the bass. <laughs> Brilliant. All right, hang on. Here comes here Morgan. We go. Morgan Bender, everybody. Morgan, Morgan Bender! <laughs> Not to be confused with Morgan Bender. Oh. 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 <laughs> hey. Thanks, guys. Do we, do you think, do you think like when you were like eight years old, you heard someone call it a bass lick and your brain just <laughs> took that wrong that and now you it. think you lick your thumb before you play bass? That must be it. <laughs> <laughs> when I was learning bass... <laughs> ..with a British impresario that I doubt you guys have ever heard of called Clyde... Holcroft. <laughs> Sir Clyde Holcroft, I should say. He actually played the bit on Paul Simon's Call Me Out. Oh, yeah. That was him, you know. Digga, 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 That was him. He played the, the, the Seinfeld bass line too, right? Is that yeah, he played, he played some of them. OK. The early episodes, and he had a huge falling out with uh, the guy who played Kramer. I won't say why. <laughs> Let's just say he knew before we did. And... <laughs> yeah, but he played... Well, he did the... Boom, ba -dum, boom, 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 boom. And I actually was the person that went... <laughs> <laughs> I get residuals from the show. I've actually made... <laughs> I've actually made $75 million. <laughs> But we're back with the bass. The bass is back. We're back with the bass and we're back at it again. And tonight, you lucky things, we'll be chatting with Hugh Grant, Mike Coulter, and later we've got a performance from uh, Tomorrow by Together. Uh, Nico, how was your weekend? It was, it was a good weekend. We were, uh, we're, we were at the beach all weekend. Were you? Yeah. I guess that's the only place you can get any real privacy now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um... It was a very restful and peaceful time at the beach, yeah. And then on Sunday, the, uh, the podcast that I was uh, a guest on was, uh, was released, which yeah. was really fun for, for me and, like, three other people. It, it, just so you know, it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's job is senior vice president of Late Night at CBS. He did a two-hour podcast about Late Night without mentioning James Corden or CBS. <laughs> It's amazing. That, that's an absolute choice, isn't it, Nick? I was just... Not even some all... chat at the start. There wasn't well, just even... Just like even the establishment of the idea of why this Malaysian person reached out to do a podcast because she saw her, him on this show <laughs> didn't come up. And we none of us got a mention. Who got a mention? It was Fallon? Conan a lot. Co it was all Conan. Leno got Leno. in there. SNL. Letterman, SNL, Carson. Car Johnny Carson got in there. In Living Color. In Living in Color. In Living Color. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Twice. I am literally sweating wow. through this entire outfit that I'm wearing right now. 
<laughs> oh, oh dear. So when's part two out, Nick? It's out. Aunt Said Nick. no one. <laughs> Now, I'm excited to listen to it. <laughs> uh, everyone's been very nice about it to me no, until haven't. right now. Just so you know, they, everyone has not been very nice about it. <laughs> everyone's been very nice about it to you. The everyone's been very nice about the Emoji movie to me. <laughs> If I went on, if I went on only comments that people told me about the Emoji Movie, it's bigger than Toy Story. <laughs> Look inward. <laughs> I'm I, excited for part two. I, th I thought that movie was pretty good. <laughs> I know, a lot of people say that. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, it's that time, it's time to jump into the news. James Corden. Ooh. That felt more weather to me. It was Christmas, I that think. That felt more weather. That felt more weather, like I should have a little, oh, it's a hot one out there. It's a total rip off CBS Evening News, actually. CBS Evening News, Nora O'Donnell. Yeah, I think between 82 and 89. Oh, Ooh. so not now. Dan Rather days, Dan Rather days. I think so. Dan Rather days. I think so. All right, one more. Go on. It's time for the news. Featuring James Corden. Well, it's a hot one out there today. And... <laughs> Capping off a busy weekend of G7 meetings in England, President Biden met with Queen Elizabeth yesterday afternoon at Windsor Castle. The two had tea, or as Joe Biden calls it, getting in the scone zone. <laughs> Biden was welcomed with a military guard of honour. Have a look. Look at that. I don't know how relaxed I could be just walking alongside someone just holding a sword. <laughs> could you I just constantly be like, you, could, you don't have to... You can put that down if you... <laughs> and the guy's like, no, I have to walk with a sword to make sure you don't go running after any ice cream trucks. So. <laughs> <laughs> how, many did you thought, how many times do you think Biden asked to hold that sword? I reckon 25. <laughs> come on, buddy, let me just... Come on, give me a go. I'm not going to mess around. Come on. <laughs> Now, apparently, <laughs> President Biden actually broke etiquette rules when he first met the Queen yesterday. It's a bit hard to tell in the video, but here's the exact moment that they meet. And if you look here, look, yep, yeah, he's wearing his trademark aviators. And according to royal experts, wearing sunglasses while meeting the Queen is a big no-no. This is the most British story ever. Instead of somebody just asking Biden to remove his sunglasses, they did what British people do best. They gave him passive-aggressive looks and then just trashed him behind his back. <laughs> Can you imagine if Trump had done that? The American press would explode. It'd be like, because Biden did it, they're like, ah, no, but it's all right, he's not the last guy. <laughs> It wasn't totally disrespectful. Biden did tilt the glasses down as the Queen walked past, just to let her know that she still got it. <laughs> and you remember how we told you that Jeff Bezos was going to auction off a seat on his flight into space next month? Well, the auction was held over the weekend, and the winning bid was $28 million. $28 million for a 10-minute flight. For that kind of money, it better land at an all-inclusive resort in Fiji. Or well, that is... <laughs> The identity of the mystery bidder will be revealed in the coming weeks. I hope whoever bought the seat is like, ah, oh, no, so I tried to order a pocket knife and 28, mil and 28 minions. <laughs> and Alexa thought I said a rocket ride and 28 for 28 million. Is it too late to return this? I know, I could have done that one. <laughs> Uh, uh, Do that one again. No, I'm not doing it again. No, that's, you can't save that one. That's the impact of the weekend right there. I told you. <laughs> It's the best you're gonna get, Bobby. <laughs> you know, it was a it was a steep hike for not a great view in the first place. Don't feel bad about it. Yeah, it yeah. was. It was a steep hike for something you can see from the middle. Right. Yeah. <laughs> do you want me to do it again? Kinda. I mean, it's a good joke. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I I don't think it's that good a joke. <laughs> All right, we'll move on. We'll move on. You're a right stickler today. What's happened? <laughs> you, know what, uh, you know what rocket sounds like? 
Hey, Alec. Pocket, pocket knife. Pocket knife a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Do you think somebody just got confused yeah. and was like, oh, no, hang on, I ordered a, a pocket knife and 28 minions. Minions. Ah. And you thought you heard rocket flight and t for 28 million. Yeah. I'm going to have to, is it too late to return this? Uh, can, d d in this day and age, when so many people are buying things off of their... Alexa. Alexa's and other virtual assistants, yeah. like, it's not hard to conceive of a reality where someone accidentally... Ordered, ordered a some... pocket knife and 28 minions. Yeah, because a lot of people are... A lot of people are buying minions <laughs> off of Amazon. <laughs> and did everybody see this? According to a new study, listening to music before bed can disrupt your sleep because you could end up getting catchy songs stuck in your head. The study used three songs, Shake It Off by Taylor Swift, Call Me Maybe by Carly Rae Jepsen and Don't Stop Believing by Journey, which I just do not see as fair in any way. They said the study was about listening to music, not listening to just absolute freaking bangers. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody in the history of the earth, world has ever been like, oh, well, I'm tired, I'm going to turn in. I'll just put on Don't Stop Believing before I... <laughs> 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 oh, babe, should we... Oh, turn that... Let me turn that light off, I'm going to... I'm, I'm done. Turn the light off and I'm going to go to bed, yeah. We just put on Whoop There It Is by the <laughs> <laughs> Although, you know, I've got a special trick that I've started using to help, because I've been struggling getting to sleep recently. I, I don't know why. It's a, a lot of stuff in my mind. I've got an amazing new trick. I listen to any podcast with Nick Bernstein, <laughs> and I am... <laughs> 15 seconds. All I, I get to the K of Conan and I am out like a... <laughs> In other news, the famous Westminster Kennel Club dog show was held over the weekend and a Pekingese named Wasabi was awarded Best in Show. Here's a slow-motion video of Wasabi in action and it is beautiful. Tonight, the Pekingese, the winningest breed... Look at that! Oh, my God! I see why they called that dog wasabi, because it is hot. <laughs> <laughs> look at that part, look at that, though. It looks like a puppy and like it's a thousand years old at the same time. 